If you have your Bibles, we'd ask you to turn to 2 Peter, 2 Peter chapter 2, and we're going to begin reading in verse 9, 2 Peter chapter 2, and we're going to be re begin our reading in verse 9. Second Peter chapter 2 and verse 9, the Bible says, the, the Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations, and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanliness and, dis and despise governments, presumptuous are they, self-willed, they are, not, they are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Whereas, whereas angels, which are greater in power and might, bring not railing an accusation against them before the Lord. But these, as natural brutes, brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption, and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness, as they count it pleasure to riot in to riot in the day to riot in the daytime. Spots they are and blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings, while they make feast with you having eyes full of adultery that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls, as a heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children, which have forsaken the right way and have gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bosor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but was rebuked but was rebuked for his iniquity, the dumbass speaking with man's voice forbade the madness of the prophet. These are wells without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest. To him the mist of darkness is reserved forever. <clears throat> for when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were clean escaped from them to live in error. While they promised them, while they promised them liberty, they themselves are servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same he is brought in bondage. For if after they escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord Jesus. Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they again entangled therein and overcome them. The latter end is worse than the beginning. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than, after they had known it, to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it happened to them, as according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the soul and the sow was washed in her that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. Amen. Lord, we thank you and we praise you for all that you do for us. We thank you for this little church and that we might be strong in the latter days. God, we pray that we would be strengthened by you through your word, through your spirit, Lord, that you waken us up today uh, to the many things that be happening around us. And we'd be faithful to give you the praise and the glory and the honor for it all. For it is in Christ's name that we do pray. Amen. Now, I so apologize about a lengthy reading, but I felt it necessary to get it because uh, it's all addressed to the same group of individuals. Now, uh, both epistles of Peter are what is called general epistles. In other words, uh, they went to more than one church. The, the, uh, uh, Brother Jared's been uh, helping us study through the book of Romans. That, that church, the best we know, it went to the Romans, it was addressed to the Romans, 
It was for problems that was found in the church at Rome. You can see in Romans chapter 1, the, the way that the church at Rome went was already beginning to happen, and so that problem was addressed. The church at Corinth had people in it that were running around on their, on their wives and on their husbands. That subject was addressed in 1 Corinthians. And so then we have this other group that's called a general epistle, a general letter, a letter that will help everybody. Now, you know, people tend to, uh, to uh, relate things in Scripture and understand it with how their own mind works. And I don't mean to interpret to yourself, but uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, nursing, I, I can see Scripture in nursing and nursing in Scripture. Uh, very few things that you can give everybody in medicine. In other words, I'm on a certain set of medicines that probably would do y'all more harm than good. And there is one thing that you can give pretty much to everybody, and everybody that I know of in the nursing home I presently work is on it, and that's vitamins. Now, this sounds crazy. You can't give everybody minerals, but you can give everybody vitamins. Minerals... Uh, for people in kidney failure will make them much worse. And, and so you have to be cautious in that. But vitamins will work for everyone. And, and in the same way, this general epistle, this epistle that was shared with many, many churches, was good for everybody. Now the downside of that, apparently this was a problem in more than one church. The problem that will be addressed was, was something that Peter must have seen more than one time on his, on his travels about. So beginning back in verse 9, uh, I love the beginning of this. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation. Now, uh, that word godly sometimes uh, is it, a little bit unsettling. But, but don't let it throw you. It's certainly we should be a separate people outside this present evil world. But godly just means that you have the stamp of the Lord Jesus Christ on you. You can't make yourself godly. That's done through the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so when he says he knows, he, he knows how to deliver the godly out of temptation, he knows how to deliver the redeemed. If you've been genuinely saved and you're struggling with temptation, he's the one to go to. He knows to how to deliver the godly out of temptation. Now, on the flip side of that, he does not say anything about the lost. And you know what? You're already lost. <laughs> you, you can't be delivered out of temptation when you're completely given to it. You see what I'm saying? Uh, this, this is a very specific promise to the genuinely redeemed or to God's elect is this promise that he will deliver us out of temptation. Uh, the rest of that verse, and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment. That is the other side of it. Uh, the elect, the redeemed, the saved, he will deliver and he'll set this other group, and it will become the theme of our text, this other group, they will be judged. And that's a very, very scary thought. You think of some of the tyrants that have lived on earth, and, and, and we visually seen them judged for what they did. Anybody know what happened to Madame Marilyn O'Hare? took prayer out of the school in the United States. She had a throat cut by her own people. Oh. She died. Her and her wicked son and his daughter were found and of their organization, I don't remember what it's called, the people that killed them stole a half a million dollars. See, that's, there was nothing for them. Can you imagine the day that they're judged and they stand before the Almighty, the God that they denied, the God that they said was not real. Those are these individuals in the second part of verse 9. Verse 10, But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanliness. 
Now, I want you to see that he begins to describe this group he just spoke of. The unjust that walk in uncleanliness. Now, we all make mistakes every day. There's not one of us, even today, so far this day, who have not sinned. That's what grace is about. Uh, who have not got involved in something already today, and if you haven't yet, by the end of the day, we lust, we envy, we look at things, but over and all in all, individuals that are truly saved are repentant at least, and they will flee from it. We, uh, if you're settled and comfortable in sin, something's wrong. So, something's defi definitely not right. And so he, uh, Peter begins to address these issues with the churches. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh, that's a, that's a beam, that's a satellite uh, of individuals that fall into this ca category in the lust of uncleanliness that, and, and despise government. Now, we'll look at this very closely in government, and I don't think it's what we think of as government. I think he's talking about the government present in the church. Uh, we'll see that he gets into these individuals speaking uh, evil of dignitaries, I believe to be their pastors or elders, and, 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 and what they do to cause issues in the church. And, and I've personally seen it, thank God I've never seen it here, but I've been in churches where it seemed like all it was was to put the pastor down. And, and, and the Lord is not pleased with that. And so he gives us some icons of individuals like this. Verse 11, uh, uh, let's finish verse 10. Uh, and despise government, presumptive presumptuous are they, self-willed, they are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Now, I want you to notice two things. I want you, if you underline in your Bible, I want you to underline that word self-willed. Uh, that is the opposite of what true Baptists believe. To be self-willed means that you think you've got it on your own. To be self-willed, think, you think if I get baptized and I live right and I hold out faithful, then and only then will I be saved. That's a self-willed gospel. A gospel originated by you, a gospel maintained by you, and a gospel that you will be rewarded for. That is not the gospel of the Bible. And if you, if you boil the waters off on every one of them, every false doctrine will come down to that. Some way or another, it's in their ability to self-willedly be saved. And, and, and uh, that, that is what uh, Peter is warning the churches about. These are icons of these individuals. Verse 11, whereas angels, created beings, beings that will only worship the Lord God Almighty, Whereas angels, which are in great, which are greater in power and might, bring not a railing accusation against them before the Lord. Now that, that that's pretty amazing speech if you think about it. And, and angelic beings are a real thing. Angelic beings still exist here on the earth. I don't think they have wings that we can see, but I do they believe they appear in our lives. And I do believe uh, how you treat them is very significant. Uh, they probably more come as a bomb to you than they do come uh, as what we think as the Catholics teach an angelic being is. But listen, uh, we uh, be careful how you treat people. That, 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 that is just common sense. And it's also good spiritual advice. Be careful how you treat people. And, and so we find here in, in, in this situation, we learn about some characteristics of an angel uh, or angels, how strong and mighty, but they won't bring raising accusation. I think in the Old Testament it actually says that also they only bring raising accusations against the devil. 
That, that's pretty serious stuff. And, and, and the opposite of that, the, these individuals that go about to destroy churches and goes about uh, in, in the boom of self-righteousness, they attack other people. They say, that's not true. That ain't right. That, that, that ain't. They do that both openly and whispering. And, and so we find that these individuals have some hallmarks of, of who they are. Verse 2, but these, these individuals that are, are, are contrary to the truth, but these as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed speak evil of things that they understand not. Now, Another, another huge token of these individuals is them speaking evil of things they don't understand, uh, such as the doctrines of grace, such as coming out from among them and being separate, be a different people, such as uh, men are not to wear what pertaineth to a woman, and a woman is not to pertaineth to wear that that pertaineth to a man, a man. Things they don't... You ever wonder why people can't get what seems to you a very simple doctrine? Well, that's why. They, they've never been enlightened. They, they've never been able to see the truth. And, and the older I get and the further I go in my ministry, I certainly believe that again and again and again that uh, these people simply don't have it. They, they don't understand because they don't have an understanding spirit. Then he says, and they shall utterly perish in their own corruption. Verse 13, and they shall receive the reward of unrighteousness. Now, what is the reward? You know, uh, a reward to me is always something you get when you win something, when, when, when you've come to the top, when you're, when you're the most effective. Well, the reward, the reward of unrighteousness is this. It's death. That's the reward of unrighteousness. And, and not just the death that each of us will experience one day and be buried out in the lot beside the church. It is eternal death. Pain, suffering, unbelief. Uh, the Bible says it, it, it is so horrible that John said it was a lake of fire. Liquid fire. Closest thing we'll see of this, that on this side of eternity is lava. Now, I've never seen lava up close. I've just seen it on the TV. But I saw enough of it that I know I don't want to be in it. Yeah. Right. And, and, and so we see, as the Lord's people, that we, uh, we these people are going to uh, let us know who they are. <laughs> Verse 13, And they shall receive the reward of unrighteousness, as they count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. Now, Brother Jared was mentioning something about Mardi Gras, and... Uh, I think you would personally be interested to see it. I didn't realize how quite demonic it is until I've been reading more recently. But they, that is these type of people. They, they, they have religion. They think, but what they really do is riot. That they're part of this world still. They're engrossed in this world. They, they do whatever the world demands, and then claim religion. Then claim Christ. Uh, uh, when what you do is a lot more uh, a lot more powerful than what we say, and, and so we see that these individuals are like this. Spots, they are, and blemishes. Now, what was the deadly disease that Israel knew about spots? Leprosy. Leprosy was all consuming. It literally rotted you to death. And, and you know what the unique thing about leprosy? It don't hurt. You know, it, 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 I've seen lots of people over the years. Mother was kind of like this near the end of her life. And 
poor circulation in their legs and literally just unbelievable sores. And mother would tell me how painful they were. But could you imagine losing a finger and not even feeling it fall off? And you know why? That's how sin works. It's pleasurable, right? It's, it's fun. Yeah. But while it is, it's all consuming. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, will, it, it will take everything of who you are and, and it will cast it away. And that's what these spots, uh, Peter certainly understood that these Jewish believers would know what he was talking about. Spots they are and blemishes sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you. Now, their spots are not leprosy spots like the Old Testament speaks of, but their spots and their beliefs and their deceiving. You ever wonder what is the, the, the most uh, dangerous doctrine? I've really thought about it, and the devil is a very, Satan is a very learned being. I won't say that he's smart, because he still don't see where he's going. But he is a very learned entity. So what he does, in addition to all these other things out here that's called religion in the modern day, he has a mock gospel of the Lord's church. It's just enough different for you to go, hmm. And that works like this. Honey, could you repeat this little prayer with me and have independent Baptists open the door? You see what I'm saying? Very close facsimile, but not the real deal. Right. And, and that's how the devil works. And so he warns them of this and he says, these individuals are going to have stuff that sounds good, but really it's a very deceiving doctrine. It is going to take people into hell because it is not real. Verse 14, having eyes full of adultery. Now, uh, ever thought about what you like? Now, I don't know if I'm a realist or very on, early on, I understood truth was not popular. But either way, I knew I wasn't Billy Graham from the beginning, <laughs> right? And uh, nor did I want to be. But in the modern day, we have a lot of young preachers, they think that's how it's going to be. Uh, but it is not. And, and these individuals that are so deceived, they want that kind of success, where there's hundreds, perhaps thousands, under the sound of my voice, uh, under the sound of their voice, listening to what they have to say. Now, uh, some of Spurgeon's words were good, but I'll give you a little info about Spurgeon before you applaud him too much. Number one, he would never submit to being ordained. And, uh, and he never was. Uh, you know what that says to me? He didn't respect the Lord's church. He also much, very much believed in a general church. If you're saved, you're in the church. I beg to differ. The Bible says the Lord had placed some in the church. And, and, and there's, some, there, there's some questions maybe how that's worded, but I do not be, believe being saved places you in the church. Uh, so uh, we find then that everyone that we depend on and, and seem to be great honoring isn't necessarily who they appear to be. Watch people. They having eyes full of adultery. You know what? You think about going by somewhere and getting a glimpse of these huge church buildings. Now, for a young preacher boy, that can be enticing. Now, right here in town, y'all remember we used to couldn't see First Baptist unless you went over there and got on Main Street, and, or excuse me, Church Street, and went up that way. Now they've got it all knocked off at the steep hillside, and you can see her from 79 now, right? You ever thought about how 
Our church compares to that. If you just look at building, I don't mean truth, and I don't mean godly people, just the church building. You know what that is? It's appealing to the flesh. Uh, you ever see those wings outside of that building? There's a wing on both sides. All of those are Sunday school rooms, every one of them. I mean, there's a lot of people, right? See, that's the type of stuff that enticed these people. They wanted, and what kind of success would that be? I would have to say, I would have to believe it's carnal success, wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. I would have to believe that it was success based on money and numbers. And, and, and that is not a spiritually uh, filled and successful ministry. These are those uh, type of people. Having eyes full of adultery, they cannot cease from sin. Now, this one is a little bit further and it's very difficult as pastor, and I know from experience, to go up and say, I'm concerned about some things in your life. That is the hardest job a pastor will ever face. And you know what? First and foremost, I have the same issues, but I believe the Bible is very clear to to. to go to someone and to correct them and to say this is not where it should be and certainly it, it, it's a hard thing it's a thing that uh, uh it, is often very awkward but it is a thing that has to be done having eyes full of adultery they cannot cease from sin people that cannot stop and continually live in sin there's no reason to wonder they're not saved they, they can't be relieved from that. And when the Lord saves us, He does relieve us from that. Beguiling unstable souls. Again, if you underline in your Bible, you underline that one because unstable souls can be beguiled. You know what unstable is? Down there where mother went to church the entirety of her life, if you want to call it a church, uh, in her life alone, Methodist, Nazarene, Free Will Baptist, Southern Baptist, and Pentecostal. How could she possibly know what she believed? That's that stuff there. Unlearned people. You know what? If someone comes in here like that after I'm gone, you tell them to hit the road. If, they come, if a man comes in here and says it, uh, uh, just trust the Lord Jesus Christ and tell him to leave. You see what I'm saying? Uh, and that's exactly how these individuals will, will present. They'll have a very charismatic character about them, but in reality, they're looking for people that are easy to deceive. A heart they have exercised with covetous practices. Now another key point in this, and, and me and uh, Brother Jody and Brother Junior was talking about this morning, the Russellite people, so-called so -called Jehovah's Witnesses, they used to even have a time clock where you put in a certain amount of time or, or you wasn't in, in, in their good graces. They crave on people who don't know the Bible. You ask them about the person of the Lord Jesus Christ and you get them down to where the rubber meets the road, you know what? They'll leave your house and they won't come back. That, that, that's these type of individuals. And I want you to see in this, they were meeting with God's people. They were in one of the Lord's churches while this was going on. And so we as the Lord's people, we have to be in tune with that. Verse 15 which have forsaken the right way. You want to know if something is uh, amiss? Have they forsaken the right way? Have, 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 uh, have they uh, left the Bible? Are they doing things to boast their own uh, personhood? I could, if I wanted to, uh, say... What is your thoughts on ecclesiology? But what good would that do? You see what I'm saying? Very much more simple to ask, what do you believe about the origin of the Lord's church? 
That's, that's language. That's these type of people talking over your head. You know, even in my lifetime, in your lifetime, very recently, probably the 1950s, the Catholics still spoke <laughs> in, uh, no matter where the church was located, they spoke in Latin in their services and nobody understood what was being said. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's these kind of individuals uh, that, that want to look so good, but they have forsaken... <laughs> the right way, which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray following the way of Balaam, the son of Basor, Bosor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. Now this week is your extra time. You can go back and, and look at the story of Balaam. And Balaam got a message from God. And he says, you tell, if you remember, a man had come and they, they wanted a battle with the court. They wanted, to, should we go up? And if we go up, are we going to be the winners? Yeah. <laughs> and God said, you better tell them not to go up. If they go up, they're going to lose and they're going to lose big time. But see, Balaam wanted the money. And what did he do? He changed the message of God. See, that's been happening since the beginning of, his, of time itself. Changing the message of God. Now, most people like the changes. Most, most people like <laughs> what man has to say rather than what God has to say. So, you know the story that Balaam actually got up and went with the enemy, and his plan was to tell them, go well. Go after it. You, you do. You, you, you get in the battle and you fight like you never have before. He changed the word of God. How many people do that today? Yeah. Back, uh, back at work, a lot of times in, in, the, in the area where the residents you know, have a place to eat snacks and such, and, uh, they have on the 700 Club. Lord help. And I just, if I look at it a minute, I just have to shake my head and walk off. It ain't even worth a Coke. And uh, it's just, and you have women out of their office, not doing, not, and, and giving them spiritual advice. And, and so we find here, this is their sword. Balaam was just like this. Verse 16. But, meaning Balaam, but, but he was rebuked for his iniquity. Now, I want you to see preaching false stuff is a sin that you will take with you the rest of your life. Will you be successful? Maybe. Will it be worth it? Certainly not. When you stand before the Almighty, your accounting will be from that book. There are four crowns mentioned, mentioned in the New Testament, and one of them is, is a crown of ministry. can't exactly remember how it's worded there. You know what? All preachers are not going to get that. All, all believers are not going to get the crown of life. The, the ones who have put something, and probably the ones that have put everything into it. Those, those are those individuals. And, and so we see... That Balaam, I'm going to do it my way. I'm going to do, and I'm going to deliver the message that I want to deliver. But was rebuked for his iniquity. The dumbass speaking. Now that ain't a derogatory term. It's, it's two things. What does dumb mean, really? It doesn't mean stupid. It doesn't mean calling someone foolish. A truly dumb person. You know what it is? They can't speak. We were talking about that on the way to church this morning is someone who's mute. Mute is another word for the same thing. Dumb means you just can't speak. Uh, it, <laughs> deaf and dumb. You've heard that? That's what it means. You can't hear and you can't speak. The first person I ever heard say that was my sister's mother-in-law, Evelyn Hawkins, and she said deaf and dumb. And she hoped that Jessica would not be deaf and dumb. And obviously... <laughs> Jessica wasn't deep and dumb. 
but that means that you can't speak. And anybody who's been around a mule, you know what? Newsflash, mules don't talk. Horses don't talk. They, they can't speak. They don't have the intelligence. They don't have the vocal cords. They don't, they don't have a series of words like we do. They just can't do it. But we find by the touch of the mighty God of heaven that, that this one could. So the unspeaking donkey or ass speaking with man's voice forbade the madness of the prophet or preacher. Now, how many people remember the story? Y'all better remember it. I've, I've preached on it enough. What happened to old Balaam's leg? Yep. He, he was riding the ash just like a horse. And the, the, uh, see, the, the donkey didn't want to get off and sin. You remember that? And he kept, he kept restricting what Balaam wanted to do. And, and finally, uh, he uh, pushed Balaam's, she pushed Balaam's leg between the wall and herself and broke his leg. And then they got, then he got so mad that he uh, jumped off the horse and was ready to kill her. Remember that? And then she began to speak. He said, don't do this. Why have you treated me thus? See, that uh, <laughs> Little West had more spiritual common sense than Balaam did himself. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. and, and so we find then that these individuals will deliberately go against God. Yeah. The rest of verse 16, the dumbass speaking with man's voice forbade the madness of the prophet. These, meaning individuals like Balaam, these are uh, wells without water, clouds that are carried with the tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever and ever. I want you to notice three things. First of all, uh, when, when, you're needing, when you're needing a rain, what you look for is what? The dark uh, the dark, windy clouds and, and, the, and the atmosphere began to change a little bit and, and the wind pick up and you know that rain's coming. But these, these individuals, they don't bring rain, but it'll be some pretty white puffy, puffy clouds with what they have to say. But what good do they do you? What, what good is a message that sounds so thrilling to this? Nothing. Nothing. We, we need messages that put us where we belong in desperate need of a Savior, in desperate need of being born again. That's the type of messages we need. Also, I want you to see it says that they are reserved for darkness. Now, over the years, me and Don and the kids have traveled a, a whole lot. And one or two things always happened. The church where we were going to, would reserve us a room, or Donna would call and reserve us a room. Tell them what time we would be there, and uh, we'd show up and we'd have a room. Who reserved this place for these people? The Almighty. They didn't reserve it for themselves, because some of them even think they're doing a fair job. And, and, and they have this place where they will go because of their falsehoods, because of what they teach, because of what they preach, they are going to be in this place. For they speak great, swelling words. This is their sermon of vanity. Y'all are doing such a good job. I love, I love to... Uh, just see y'all and look at y'all and y'all are the best. I appreciate you coming. I just, I, I don't know what to do with y'all That really boasts us, don't it? That buoy is who we are. You know what that is? It's vain. And the flesh absolutely loves it. It loves it. And, and, and so we find then that these individuals, their, their messages, uh, <laughs> 
will actually buoy the flesh. It will feel good. Sometimes you have to look at them very carefully to know what the real content is. For they speak great swelling words of vanity. They allure through the lust of the flesh. Just like Brother Garrett was saying, Ash Wednesday, and maybe it was me, Brother Junior, Brother Jody, and then uh, they get to sin for so many weeks, ending with the Mardi Gras, and uh, just a festival of pure evil. And that, uh, they're telling you that that's okay. They're telling you to have fun. Yeah. They're telling you, and, and you know, I, I'll say this, there's no scripture in the Bible where you can isolate and say alcoholic beverages are wrong, but drunkenness is. You see what I'm saying? And that is what that's all about. And, and, and so we find that these individuals will be very validating to the flesh. It, it will encourage you in things that the Lord's people ought to have no part of. And, and that is what they do. That is the success of their ministry, if you will. Through much wantonness, that were, those that were clean escape from them who live in error. Now, I want you to see the last part of the verse says that, that we can escape those that live in error. Now, how is the only way to escape, escape from error? To know what's right. Right? If you don't know what's right, you'll abide in error. Because mm -hmm. you know what? Error feels good. Error is so validating to the flesh. But we are not to be there as the Lord's people. We are to stand true in the days which we live. It's hard. Well, I pray to God we're, we're nearing the end of this road. But listen, we got to stand faithful unto the end. Verse 19. While they promised them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. Promise them liberty. Uh, very, very much they do this. And there, there's, a, there, there's different groups that promise different things. You want to live like dogs? Yeah, you can live like dogs, but bring down to the Catholic Church this much money, and you can live what you want to live. Sounds good to me. <laughs> right? Just be baptized, and you're going to be fine. It's frog hair. Mm -hmm. Only sad thing is the Bible doesn't teach that. That's exactly right. And, and, and so we find that these individuals, we can pick up on their doctrine and we see them all around us every day. And, and you know what, church? Don't, dis don't get discouraged over our little group because these things, they are more appealing than what we teach. What, what does the Bible say? Straight is the gate and narrow is the way. And few shall be there that find it. Mm -hmm. We're few anyway. Kind of fits the bill, don't it? Kind of what we as the Lord's people ought to anticipate in the day that we live. And, and so we find that Peter is giving them warning on how to pick up on these individuals individuals for if they had escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord Jesus the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ they are again entangled therein now I want you to notice two things a lot of people will use this as, as losing your salvation but read with me very carefully, and I promise we're going to close. For if, that's the first thing. Does if mean for sure? Absolutely not. For if after they had escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they were entangled, they were again entangled therein. See, if I, I don't believe these people are saved. I believe their hallmark 
is they look like something good, but they've never tasted of the goodness of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because how, if they were, they'd be satisfied with what they get. I know young in my ministry, I won't say who it was, because it's not, it's not necessary and he's gone now. I will say it's not really down, so don't think that. Uh, uh, man told me one time, he says, Larry, you have a gift for preaching. You can go anywhere you want to go with this. Now, for a young country boy, that sounded pretty good. But when I evaluated in the scriptures, I found it not to be true. They said very much that a lot of famous evangelists, they come to a point in their ministry where they choose fame over truth. And you know what? I believe even individual believers, at some point in their life, they have to say, this is what's true. We're probably never going to have a mega church. <laughs> but I love the truth more than I love numbers. And, and that's where in, every individual that loves the Lord will, will find themselves. And, uh, and just like Billy Graham, I heard very much that he, he made that decision to be an evangelist over pastoring because he wanted to be famous. And you know what? He got it. But at what cost? But at what cost? And so we find then, we as the Lord's people, all we need is the book that lays before us. In verse 21, And it, 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 it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than, after they have known it, to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them, according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. Now what does that mean? It means their nature was never changed. Right. Now both the girls each have a dog, and Sarah thinks it's a person. Um, and it had, she had picked up that she's a dog. And they keep the dogs clean and nice. And, uh, but you know what? At the end of the day, they're still dogs. The girl's good care of them hasn't changed their nature. Right. And you know what? I'd be willing to bet if either one of them vomited, they'd go back to it because their nature hasn't been changed. See, true redemption will change your nature. Mm -hmm. And false will not. Now, I've seen people do it, but I never quite understood it. Maybe how I was raised, people having hogs for pets. I mean, you know what we did? We did with hogs. They became bacon and sausage. Boys had, had two hogs. One time they raised themselves. One of them was bacon and one of them was sausage because they knew what was going to happen those things. <laughs> right? And uh, very same way, you're... You can't change. You can wash them up, make them pretty, put a bow around their neck, and you know what a hog's going to do when you get him outside? He's going to go to the muck and flop around it again because that's their nature. What is your nature? Uh, nothing wrong with asking, are you saved? Because I believe the Lord can, can convince you one way or the other. But a better, easier question maybe is what is your nature? What do you enjoy doing? What thrills? Now we all enjoy sin. But let me ask you this, what thrills your soul? Being with God's people or being down at the honky tonk that Jared pointed out to me? You see what I'm saying? Which one thrills your soul? Because that's the, that, the at the end of the day, that's, that's the real identity of a Christian. Hopeless, helpless, and a constant failure, but still craving the things of God. That's, that's a true believer. 